I'm Enzo Paduano. I'm the uh, captain on flight A32 today uh, from uh, Toronto to Montreal and on to Brussels. I'm Lee Brown, first officer today, and I'll be taking you back from Brussels all the way through to uh, Montreal. Lee's already retrieved all the uh, paperwork uh, because most captains don't know how to get that stuff anyway. But uh, anyway, it's all in front of us. We'll check the flight plan now and uh, be on our way. I'll make a, a quick call to dispatch, make sure that everything's on the uh, up and up. All the checks have been done, there's nothing unserviceable in the airplane and so on. And we'll uh, proceed from there. This is our operational flight plan that Lee has brought up. It's for flight 832 on the 16th of June 2011. We make sure that that's uh, the right date and so on. And um, Captain is correct with my employee number. We are on a 33300 a day, fin number 935. And there's the registration in the cell call code. Uh, and if we want to get hold of uh, dispatch, it's uh, Christopher Giese is our dispatcher today. We're going to be giving him a call at desk five, and just making sure everything is um, is uh, correct. And we've got some remarks there from dispatch. ATC fuel for any unforeseen delays uh, with the uh, labor situation and so on. That's probably what that uh, is uh, about. Uh, and we've got uh, please plan for Mr. Udo Schaefer, corporate film crew as ADC in the jump seat for the fan flight purposes, or for fan flight purposes, so that's you, Udo. Uh, okay, continuing on down to the um, operational flight plan portion of it, uh, we have MEL items, that's minimum equipment list, there's nothing that's uh, broken on the airplane today, so that's a good thing. And um, we're going to be flying to Montreal at uh, 33,000 feet. Our triple pause is at 39,000 feet above us, so we should get some uh, nice smooth ride today. Uh, temperature deviation is going to be standard plus 4 degrees a component. We're going to be get a push towards Montreal at 6 knots, not much. but um, And the distance, great circle from point to point, 274 nautical miles. And the flight plan route they have us on is uh, 322 nautical miles. We're going to be th uh, 55 minutes en route, that's air time. And the burn, we're going to burn 5.1 tons of uh, petrol. So, flight plan route. We're going to be departing off runway 23 today in uh, Toronto. And we're going to be doing a Lester 7 um, uh, SID, that's uh, standard instrument departure, to GOPEV. Those are just points in the uh, face of the earth sort of thing. Uh, we're in space. Uh, direct Messina, that's a VOR. Victor 203 Franks, Cedar 7 arrival into Montreal landing on 24 left. So it's going to be uh, heading out towards the uh, west, turning around, heading east, and then landing again towards the west in Montreal. Uh, we are operating on a contact clearance, it says, no alternate. So uh, it's going to give us a bit of extra gas for that. Lee, do you want to take part two? Sure. Uh, this page is a fuel information. We'll start out here over at the flight plan fuel. First of all, they give us uh, 400 kilos for taxi. That sounds about right. The burn, as we mentioned before, was 5,100 kilograms. And the extra they've gave a, given us today is uh, another 800 kilograms. And uh, alternate, we have no alternates, so there's no fuel there. Final reserve, 2,700 kilos, that's the minimum we want to have when we land the aircraft. And uh, ATC, air traffic control, just in case there's any delays because of that. We take a look at that, and we looked at that before, it all adds up to 10.0. Uh, and uh, when we arrive at Montreal, this is what we should have with the burn, 4.6. Uh, statistic fuel summary over here is is uh, to do with the extra fuel we get there under different circumstances. I won't go into that right now. Operational impacts, this is more for a longer flight, such as we will get on the uh, overseas flight. If the weight, the flight level, or the speed change here, we need to know how much fuel we're going to burn, more or less fuel, and the time, whether it's going to increase or decrease. After we've looked at this, we'll take a look down here, and uh, we'll sign it all after we've looked at the entire flight plan. And uh, this page has to deal with the times here. This column is for all the estimates here, and this is for for the uh, normal sket. Today's estimates would be based on today's winds, today's traffic, today's anticipated conditions. 
and uh, we have both uh, Greenwich Mean Time there, 2100 Zulu, 1700 Zulu, and so on, so forth down the line there, for a block time, block time from the time we push back to the time we arrive at the gate today should be one hour and 16 minutes. Normally it would be one hour and ten minutes, six minutes over schedule today. Uh, weights portion here, AFPAC release one, the AFPAC is an acronym we have for our flight plan and it's number one so it hasn't been revised by our dispatchers as of yet. Estimated passenger count should be about 244 passengers, zero fuel weight is the weight of the aircraft with all the passengers, all the bags before we add any fuel onto it at all. The fuel we're going to add today will be 9.6 plus 400 uh, that we will use up in the taxi, giving us a total weight 163.6. Landing weight estimated at 158.5. And after we're fueled the aircraft, we'll take a look at the uplift, put it in our uh, computers on board the aircraft, make sure that the addition is all correct, and that the amount of fuel we added should should uh, come up with the amount of fuel that is on the aircraft. And then we'll record that all there for, uh, <coughs> for our record keeping. Down to the train clearance here, our uh, computer database automatically checks to make sure we have sufficient train clearance in the event of a rapid depressurization where we'd have to have to uh, come down really fast. And moving on to the flight log here. This is the, uh, <clears throat> the heart of the flight plan here. It's from Toronto to all the waypoints along the flight, route of flight and onto our destination of Montreal. Also at the top of climb and top of descent. Because it's such a short flight there, there's no waypoints in between here. Uh, as there will be, and we do the overseas, there will be uh, numerous waypoints in there. And uh, moving along the top here, we start with the lat long of each point here. The yeah, estimated en route time and the total time to get to these points. And the estimated time over and the actual time over, we will record on the flight plan as we proceed along. And the flight level that we'll be proceeding at. And these are to do with the uh, compass headings and directions, so on and so forth. Uh, true air speeds, ground speeds here, wind component, and and the shear number here. There's no shear numbers there today. Wind shear could possibly mean some turbulence. There's none showing today uh, because of the short distance of the flight. And also here we go over to the outside air temperature. The temperature deviation, whether it's warmer or colder, will let us know how much uh, the uh, climb performance and the ultimate performance we'll get out of the aircraft. And uh, this column here is all to do with the fuel. It's the estimated fuel on board, starting out with 9.6 actual fuel on board. We can record that at that point. And the minimum fuel on board, that's the fuel that we need to legally complete the flight with the adequate reserves. And this is basically wind information here, climb, top of climb, top of descent at the various altitudes, temperatures and winds there. And the ICAO flight plan, that's what our dispatchers have filed for us. It's basically the same as the flight plan portion in the very, very uh, front of the page. The main thing we check are these waypoints along here, that they're the same as the front. We check that uh, in flight planning. We also check it again as we put it in the aircraft. And uh, having said all that, Enzo, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so this is a good time to call our dispatcher, Chris Easy, and ask him if there's anything we should know about. This whole flight plan here, it's Chris's work. He does all the flight planning, all the numbers for us, gives us our fuel burns, basically everything we need, puts it on here, and then we'll talk to him. And Per the dispatcher, uh, and um, no delays out of Toronto, and no delays into Montreal. So, and the rides were reported as smooth by other aircraft. So, uh, it's a good day to go flying. For arrival in Montreal, it says we're going to be there around 22:10 Zulu. 
So we look right now, the weather in Montreal is um, out of the southwest, the wind's at 11 knots, beautiful day, 15 miles, uh, statute mile of visibility, a few clouds at 6,500 feet, broken clouds at 21,000 feet, 29 degrees, so it's a nice warm day, 16, so it's a dry day, uh, 2979 is the altimeter, and just in remarks, there's uh, cumulus 1 uh, tenth, I guess, and uh, cirrus 0. Anyway, uh, not much cloud. And for our arrival at uh, 22, uh, for the entire period, it's uh, winds out of the southwest at 10 knots, six statute mile visibility, few clouds at 6,000, few at 1,500. So it's a beautiful day. That's why we're going with all day uh, destination alternate, not required. Let's again see if there's any, these are SIGMET's um, reports for uh, abnormal weather convective weather and so on, uh, 2055, Zulu, uh, that should not impact us, and that uh, coincides with what uh, Flight Dispatch told us as well, Boston area, Montreal area. Again, that should not impact us. There's our en route weather maps. We'll go through some isolated CBs uh, in this area, uh, topped at 35,000 feet, but they're very scattered and uh, dispatch said they're dissipating, so should not uh, cause any uh, concern for us. These are upper air winds at uh, 30,000 feet. 34,000 feet, a little closer to our um, our actual uh, flight planned altitude. Very calm. Light winds. 39,000 feet. Well, we never do to hit the trope at all. This is the uh, trope of pause, uh, where we could get some uh, wind shear and so on. We're we're quite a ways below it. Uh, we're they said we're traveling at 33,000 feet, and it's up around 39,000. So we're below the trope of pause. Should be a nice flight. These are uh, pilot reports from previous aircraft, and there's absolutely nothing indicating uh, rough rides or uh, anything to be concerned about. And that's that. We're going to be uh, the flight planning uh, portion of it is complete now. We're going to be heading to the airplane, do a little walk around, uh, which is a normal uh, maintenance function. They're much more um, uh, skilled at it than we are. They know exactly what to look for. We're going to go out. Have a quick look around the airplane and there's no damage uh, visible to us, no leaks uh, and the like. But uh, let's go do it now. Here we are standing outside uh, bin 935 and A330-300. It's going to be taking us from uh, Toronto to Montreal en route to Brussels. And we're just going to do a quick uh, walk around. As I said earlier, uh, this is a function that's normally done by the uh, maintenance pros. They know a lot more of what to look at, but we're gonna do a quick inspection, just make sure that no one has hit the aircraft from the time that it arrived and the time that it's departing. So uh, let's get on with that. Now we're simply gonna look at the, uh, at the nose of the aircraft, the fuselage. There's no uh, obvious damage, no one's run into it. All the probes. Airspeed uh, probes and so on, uh, temperature probes are all clear and uh, in good repair. We'll look at the nose wheel section. Making sure that the uh, neither tire is flat. No obvious uh, damage or fluid leaks. It's in good shape, the tires are in good shape, tread wear is, uh, is very acceptable, they look like fairly new tires. Making sure that the uh, runway turn off and taxi lights are in good shape, they are. We'll move back a little bit, making sure that the uh, angle of attack sensors are in good shape, no damage. More probes, gear doors are in good shape. Cargo door, there's no damage.
These are our uh, plate instrumentation static ports. We want to make sure that the uh, holes inside of them are not plugged. That would give us erroneous uh, indications in the cockpit. They're all in very nice, clean shape. Once again, checking for obvious damage. No one's run into the aircraft. That's a good thing. Just checking the root of the wing. It's in good shape. Leading edge is in good shape. One of the slats has come out. Once we get uh, hydraulic power, that's going to retract fully. Engine intake is in very nice shape. Good and clean and big. All access doors are closed and locked. Once again, no obvious damage to the leading edge of the wing. All the structures underneath the wing are in good shape. Again, no, uh, no obvious signs of damage or impact. Winglet's in good shape. The light is in good shape, the lens. Checking that there's uh, the static uh, dissipators are on the wing. Doesn't appear there's any missing. Little bit of aileron droop, that's once again because of uh, no hydraulic pressure on the aircraft. Nice clean airplane, that's what we like to see. Now we go to the uh, right main gear, once again, checking the tires. The brake wear indicators are, uh, are visible, they're in good shape. There's no obvious uh, fluid leaks or damage. They do a great job of keeping these things in uh, tip-top shape. Once again, uh, brake wear indicators are visible. This is a fairly new brake. No hydraulic leaks or fluid leaks of any sort. And we'll make our, back, our way back to the uh, tail. The vertical stabilizer is in good shape. The rudder, no damage. Leading edge of the... Uh, Go ahead, John. Stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer. Elevator's in good shape. No access doors are uh, open that should not be open. The APU exhaust looks good. The tail uh, lens for the uh, strobe looks good. Horizontal stabilizer is set at ground set. That's in good shape. We will trim that as we require uh, for takeoff. Once again, no visible damage. That's basically what we're looking for. That's an outflow valve. It's open, it's on the ground. That's the way it's supposed to be. Back to the uh, left main gear now. No fluid leaks. Brake wear indicators are in good shape. Brake wear indicators. No fluid leaks. And everything looks in good shape.
anti collider uh, light is in uh, good shape. The lens, that's the air conditioning, external air conditioning hose that's hooked up right now. That'll all be pulled in uh, due time. Wing looks in excellent shape. Once again, some uh, aileron droop. Normal on the ground. Winglet's in great shape, static uh, dissipators, the wicks are all in good shape. The lens is not damaged for the strobe and uh, anti-collider light, or position light rather. Leading edge looks in very nice shape. All external uh, access doors are all closed and locked. Leading edge of the intake looks in uh, very nice shape. Nice and clean. They've buffed out a uh, couple of scratches or dents. Slat is drooping a little bit. That once again will retract once we uh, get some hydraulic pressure. Landing light, lens is in good shape. Another outflow valve open. More static ports. They're in good shape, they're all uh, clear and open. And another airspeed, uh, by the angle of attack indicator, that's in good shape. No damage, so that's the end of a uh, Abbreviated walk around on the A330. Here we are in the flight deck. I'm going to start the uh, ramp check, prepare the cockpit for the uh, flight from Toronto to Montreal. Lee's done some of the preliminary work while we were out doing the walk around, and that's uh, a great thing. here, the batteries, uh, less than 60 within 10 seconds, charge rate, perfect, thanks Lee. Okay, now checking the engine oil, got 18.7 and 19, that's way above minimum. Pressurization, got auto, landing elevation in Montreal. Lots of hydraulic quantity. Our circuit breakers are popped. Our uh, brake temperatures are good. And the status is clear. Set TA and above. Okay, Lee. Uh, we've got uh, zero and zero. Zero. One FD two. One FD two. Two nine or seven eight inches gives me five eighty and uh, about five ninety. Two nine seven eight five eight. And I've got uh, zero six nine zero six nine zero six nine. And hitting zero six nine zero six nine. Cross beam less than five knots. We've got GoPev our first waypoint. And Toronto VOR. And same in my side. So, we have our PDC. Yes. This is the pre departure uh, clearance we've received from air traffic control. They've given it to us before uh, departure. And we're looking for the number, uh, it's uh, air, air Canada ACA 832 Toronto. It's a heavy A330 uh, 300, filed at flight level 330, that's 33,000 feet. Our transponder is 0523, which we've previously set. 
It says use La Sid Lester 7, departure runway 06 left, destination Montreal, contact clearance delivery with identifier 141 Juliet, and our routing that they've given us is Gopev, Messina, Victor 203 Franks, Cedar 7, and flight plan route. Okay, the routing checks, I'll call clearance delivery. Okay, listening. Clearance delivery here, Canada 832 with EDC, gate 124, information India, code 141 Julia. Okay, for the pusher, Canada 832. Okay, so the Luster 7. That's uh, chart 10-3 Bravo, effective 5th of May 2011. Off runway 06 left, unless otherwise authorized, assigned by ETC, climb heading 057 or assigned heading for vectors to assigned route. I think it's going to be a managed departure anyway. Jet aircraft maintain 5,000. Okay, and Emergency safe uh, altitude uh, quadrantal within uh, 25 nautical miles of the Toronto VOR is uh, the highest is 3,100 on the eastern sector. And uh, Lester 7 says max speed of 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Our TOCA, page 1010. 1010 Foxtrot. Thank you. 1010 Foxtrot, TOCA. Okay. All other runways, TOCA is 1,200. If engine failure prior to initial turn, maintain runway heading to at least 2,200 prior to turns. All clear? Understood. Okay. So, I read. All right, starting out on the status page, Trent engines and database good from the 2nd of June to the 30th of June, right AC1. On. Uh, performance factor of one. Okay, three minus two is one correct. Is one. Nothing to detune. Going from Toronto to Montreal, standard route, no alternate, ACA 832. And, uh, Cost index is uh, 19. And we're going to flight level uh, 330. Temperature is uh, plus four. So that's uh, minus 46. And the tropopause is 39,000. Cockpit to ground. What do you call? Okay, that's right. all she wrote. Okay, so departing on six left, Lester seven, no transition, and 057 heading, and rooting. I got Gopev Messina and Montreal VOR. That's it. Uh, is Gopev Messina, Victor 2 or 3 Franks. When we put the arrival in, it'll be over Franks anyway. Okay, so arrival. Right now they've got us on 24 left. 24 left. Door route, ACA 832, Toronto to Montreal, off 6 left, Leicester 7, Gopev direct Messina, Cedar 7, Franks, 24 left. Good enough. I don't think there's anything to detune. Okay, nothing to detune. So the APU is up and running. They've external uh, taken off the external power. Lock has been checked. APU is running. Fuel reported and recorded. Load. We have our preliminaries. In charge has been briefed. Takeoff briefing. This is going to be a left seat takeoff on runway 06 left in Toronto. No shift. Laps one. Flex set 61, speeds are 126, 126, 132, clean, 203, thrust reduction, accelerate engine out, all 1570, that's a thousand feet above ground, and uh, Tokus 1200, so that's good, we time of 1570 anyway. It's going to be off of runway uh, 06 left, it's a managed departure, and unless otherwise assigned by ATC, climb heading 057. We're assigned to heading for vectors to assign route, maintain 5,000. We've already discussed the uh, engine out procedure that happens before the initial turn, maintain runway heading to at least 2,200 before any turns. Understood. So, should we review some uh, emergencies, Lee? Yes. Okay. If you're flying, continue to fly, unless I say I have control. Rolling down the runway, something happens, we'll assess the situation. 
I'll say either continue or reject. In the event of a reason to reject, I'll call reject simultaneously. Most speakers to idle. Confirm or apply maximum braking by pressure on the uh, shoulder harnesses. Select max reverse thrust. I monitor the brake response. I'll call a reverse screen or no reverse. Number one or two engine. I'll monitor indications through 70 knots. I'll call 70 and advise ATC. I'll continue with maximum reverse and braking. They'll come in at a stop on the runway, hopefully, which time I'll set the park brake. Forward idle thrust. Ecam actions. And I will complete the Ecam actions. Okay, I'll pick up the PA. And I will say, attention, attention. Remain seated, remain seated. We'll assess the situation and we'll get information from anybody that wants to give it to us. Tower, other aircraft, uh, flight attendants can tell us anything. Uh, if we have to look out our windows, we can do that too. If we determine that an evacuation is not necessary, that uh, we'll just continue off the runway and uh, we'll go through the brake cooling thing and uh, the chart and uh, continue on from there. If at any time we determine that an evacuation is necessary, I'll say stop ECAM, checklist, pass your evacuation. I'm flying. At or above V1, you call it a problem. All right, I will call engine fire or power loss. I'll cancel the master caution or master warning. And uh, establish depth of climb, I'll call positive brake. Okay, I'll continue to take off, rotate the BR and lift off. Once you say uh, positive brake, I'll say gear up. And gear up, spoilers disappear. I'll bring the aircraft under control, trimming off the rudder. And at 100 feet, I'll say autopilot one on, I'll put it on. And if required, I'll go toga thrust at that point. At 400 feet, I'll say ECAM actions. Okay, and I will complete the initial ECAM actions called fire out, fire not out, or engine relight the machine. Okay, I will say stop ECAM. I will continue climbing out up to the toga today, which is 1570 in Toronto. And at which time I'll push the uh, altitude hold or push the VS to level off. I'll accelerate in level flight. We're cracking flaps and slats on schedule. When clean and at green dot speed, I'll go altitude pull, speed set pull, max continuous thrust, continue ECAM. And I will complete the ECAM and ECAM status page. Okay. We'll pick a time in there. I'll have ATC. I'll uh, declare the emergency, ask them to stand by. And once we're all sorted out, uh, we'll advise them if we do have an emergency of the uh, number of souls on board amount of fuel on board and any dangerous goods, which today we shouldn't have any. And uh, we're below our maximum landing weight today, so that's not a factor. We'll come back into Toronto, uh, I think you'll agree. And uh, we'll do the uh, APCO, ATC. After, of course, I'll let you do the status first. Continue status. Complete the status, and you can status page. Okay. And then we'll do the ATC, back end we'll advise of our uh, type of landing, uh, time to uh, prepare, what type of a landing is in uh, on the ground or whatever, uh, if any uh, special uh, duties have to be performed. Overweight landing checklist, not applicable today, and company uh, will advise them. Put in a conversion message, and we'll come in and land. There'll be a config tree if we have to land with an engine up. Cruising along at altitude, if one of us notices a pressurization problem, he'll call it out. I will say I have control, making sure autopilot one is on. And I'll say the rapid depressurization drill. Grab my oxygen mask, put it on, speaker up, intercom on, captain on oxygen. And mask, speaker, intercom, first officer on oxygen. I'll put the seatbelt sign on. I'll say ECAM actions. And I will complete the ECAM actions. Okay. While you're doing that, I will make a PA, attention, flight attendants, secure the cabin, passengers take your seats. I'll uh, declare an emergency if required. I'll get ATC clearance down to 10,000 feet. It's going to be a good one today. And uh, I'll wait for your call. All right. And uh, in the meantime, I will assess the pressurization. I will call cabin OK or cabin in control. If you say cabin in control, I'll say emergency to set. I will put cleared altitude, hopefully 10,000 feet, and pull. Heading, pull, speed, pull. Speed boat confirmed. Idle thrust confirmed on the FMA. Speed breaks out, and we'll start down at uh, max applicable speed. If it's a deep or a, an explosive type situation, we'll maintain uh, present speed. All right. I'll complete ECAM action silently. Advising any emitted or pertinent ECAM messages. We'll squad 7700. I'll confirm with you. 
that you've contacted ATC. I'll check the cabin altitude of the pressurization. The cabin altitude is about 14,000 feet. Mask man, it's a red guarded switch, the one with the hook on. I'll confirm that with you. Push and hold for at least two seconds. Roger. I'll continue on down. You can call me through all the uh, cardinal altitudes uh, through 18,000 with a QH. I'll put the seat belt or the uh, landing lights on. And uh, 2,000 feet above desired altitude, I will decrease rate of descent down to 250 uh, knots by increasing uh, the S. And uh, 1,000 feet above desired altitude, I will track the speed brakes. And at level off, we can call for the PA uh, in charge of flight attendant report or call the flight deck with or without oxygen. We'll uh, check into uh, the security of the aircraft and the passengers, of course, and make a decision what to do then. And uh, one at a time, I'll hand control over to you. I'll take my oxygen mask off and uh, stow it, making sure that little nib is pushed so we can communicate. And then I'll take control again. You can take your oxygen mask off and uh, we'll proceed from there. All right. And if we have to do a go around, I will call on the approach, of course. And, uh, I will call go around flap simultaneously applying toga thrust or yeah, toga thrust and rotating the go around attitude. All right, I will move the flaps up one notch and I will monitor everything you're doing and establish a depth of climb. I will call pause and break. Gear up. Gear up. Spoilers, yes, sir. Okay, I'll continue climbing out at. Uh, 1,500 feet, climb thrust, and proceed as for normal takeoff. And if we do it from a higher altitude, I guess we just go uh, toga to get the uh, go-around uh, track and then back to climb. And then just wheel our way around. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Are you happy with the rest? I'm happy. Okay, we're ready to go. Hey, we're located at uh, gate 124 right now, which is uh, in this little wing of the uh, Terminal 1 in Toronto. We'll be pushing back onto one of the uh, lanes five or six uh, and then uh, probably taxiing out Alpha Kilo uh, down either Alpha or Bravo southbound and then turning westbound on uh, Delta taxiway for the takeoff point for 06 left right there. We'll be taking off towards the east and then uh, circling around in Montreal and landing towards the west. Before start check, please, down to the beacon signs. Aiders. Are now. AP bleed. On. Sternal power, fuel, nose wheel steering. Lights out. Check. Disconnected. Cabin. Is secure. Down to the window. Windows and doors. Closed. Down to the beacon and signs. And push back clearance, please. Apron Air Canada 832 Heavy, gate 124, push and start. Air Canada 832 Heavy. Tail west, lane, had to correction, make it tail east on lane 5 today, call taxi. Tail east, lane 5, call taxi, Air Canada 832 heavy. Tail east, lane 5, yes. rest of the check please. Beacon and signs. On, on and auto. Rest of the idle. Four star check complete. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead sir. Yes sir, brakes off, ready for pushback. Tail east, on to lane 5 please. Okay sir, your brakes are off, they want us on lane 5, tail to the east and let you know when to start check. Roger, playing engine starting until advised. Okay, sir, you're clear to start. Roger, starting engines one and two. Starting one. Kilo for 137. Air Canada 142, Alpha Kilo to 137. Alpha Kilo to the gate, thank you. Clarence, flagship. Starting two.
Okay, Brendan Lowe, Jazz 540, Alpha Kilo for 128. Jazz 540, Alpha Kilo, and I think it's a Break set, confirm when pins are removed. Yes, sir, I will. Okay, sir, the pins are removed, almost disconnected. Okay, revert 10 signals, a nice push, and uh, have a great night. Good night, sir. Have a nice flight. Thank you. Apron, Air Canada, 832 Heavy, tax. Air Canada, 832 Heavy, hold short of Alpha Kilo. Short Alpha Kilo, Air Canada, 832 Heavy. Okay, straight ahead to Alpha Kilo, clear right. to the left. Bravo to hold for Tango, 2979, we have Juliet, Jazz, 777. ASP 5, cross three two right into the closure, Bravo. Cross three two right into the closure, thank you. Heavy line up and wait six left. Line up and wait six left. They're coming to 832. Press the check, please. And a 533 contact. Pressure now on 128. And a 533. Gavin alerted. Engine start. Oh. Axe on engine bleed. Anti ice. Weather radar. Off and off. For takeoff check complete. Ready and we're clear. It'll be uh, 126, 126, 132. We're going to climb. Are we heading? 5,000. Toka is 1,200. 1,570 for our uh, reasons. Afternoon, Toronto, Ontario, 44, 50 over. Initial turn, maintain runway heading to at least 2,200 prior to initial turn. Right, turn, turn right to 100. Big turn to hang at 100. 6 left is confirmed. Okay, Toka, 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 Clear line 6 right, you go 4460. Got an 832 heavy, clear takeoff 6 left. Clear takeoff 6 left, there, Canada 832 heavy. Lights on. Jazz 7757, departure 128, that's light. 128, that's light. Go. Farragut 1586, hold short of 6 left. Farragut 1586, hold short of 6 left. Backlights, SRS, auto thrust. Uh, Montreal, we've been cleared. Uh, we were, went out on a heading of uh, a runway heading extension of 057, and leaving, uh, I believe it was around 4,000 feet, we were cleared direct to uh, Messina. So we're going to Messina, which is uh, just a little bit west of uh, Montreal, and from there we'll be doing the arrival on to runway 24, uh, probably 24 right, the uh, northern parallel runway in Montreal. So uh, a very routine uh, departure out of Toronto. They're, uh, they're pretty efficient. The only real uh, restrictions are that uh, if we lost an engine, as I had said earlier, 
And we would have had to maintain, before any turns off of runway 06 left, we would have had to maintain uh, 2,000, uh, or runway heading rather, to 2,200 feet before proceeding off the runway center line, off that heading. Uh, noise, they don't like you to turn below uh, 3,000 feet uh, above ground, which uh, we kept a nose high attitude and a, a speed back a little bit until we reached that 3,000 uh, above ground altitude. And then we uh, started to accelerate. We uh, put our flaps up on uh, schedule above 1,000 feet uh, above ground. And um, so it was a very, very efficient uh, departure. They say it's normally like that out of Toronto. They're very good. They want to get you out and on your way and uh, out of their hair sort of thing. So uh, everybody's happy. Airline's happy because it's making money, not burning too much gas, detouring. Standard 299, two inches set. Landing lights are in. Okay, Lee, uh, it all checks out. When you're ready, I'll brief. I'm ready. Okay, this will be a um, Cedar 7 arrival into uh, Montreal Dorval. Chart 10 to Bravo, effective 8th of April, 2010. We're going to be approaching Messina. From Messina, we'll be going over Franks. And for runway uh, 24 left and right, at or below 16,000. From Franks, we'll be going to Como. Then to Bivro, to cross Bivro, at or above 6,000. That all checks out in the box. Then to Avil, at or above 3,000, max 200 knots. And then a 058 heading, unless they close us off for Lona, uh, which is uh, at or above 3,000. For the ILS on 24 right in Dorval, chart 11-5, 6th of February, 09. Loke IZZ, 111.9, 238 degrees, final approach course. The uh, Jerry 1740, DA 306 on the barometric altimeter. Monitor or announce 100 above a minimum, I'll call any or go around. In the event of a go-round, I will call go-round flaps simultaneously climb to 3,000 on a track of 238, right turn to the Montreal VOR and hold. It all checks out in the box. The uh, highest quadrantal is uh, 3,300 feet, all quadrants actually, based on the uh, Montreal VOR. Visibility requirements are RVR 2,600 or a half. And it'll be config three, auto brake low. I'll plan on uh, 24 right, turning off on Bravo two. If I remember, I'll call you auto brakes off at uh, some point and uh, turn off the runway and uh, wait for clearance across 28, uh, 10. I'll monitor your announce, 100 above the minimum. Okay, any questions? No questions. I think I've covered it all. Information uniform. We have uniform. Sure. Hey. Lee, I have control. For, uh, the uh, pre-descent check, please. You have control. Pre-descent checklist, the approach briefing completed, landing data set, pressurization checked, ECAM status checked, and nav accuracy checked. Checked. Pre-descent checklist complete. Thank you. On the left side of the aircraft, you'll see uh, Mount Royal. Mount Royal, that's a nice view. Uh, it's a nice clear evening as well, so uh, you might get a nice view of that. Other than that, you'll see uh, Air Canada's headquarters, where we all started. Air Canada 832 when ready, descent level 290. Flight level 290 uh, when ready, Air Canada 832 heavy. Air Canada 832, Roger, and call Montreal now 134907. 134907, Air Canada 832. 290 is set. 5 out of 1. 2465, Air Canada 4006. Thanks, good night. 
Charler Canada 832 Heavy, flight level 330, clearance down to 290. Air Canada 832 Heavy, Montreal Centre, good evening. Runway 248 for you, information is uniform. And you may continue your descent to 8000, the altimeter is 2977. So we check 2977 down to 8000 uh, feet, we have information uniform, we check 24 right. Okay. Canada 832, end the descent when you're ready. Uh, Canada 832, descent our discretion. 8,000 is set. I'm starting down now, leaving 330 for 8,000. Mock descent. Montreal Air Canada 832 Heavy, 132 for 9,000. Air Canada 832 Heavy, Montreal Bonjour identified. Uh, proceed direct to Avil for 24 right at Trudeau, altimeters 2977, maintain 8,000. Hey, direct to Avil, uh, 2977 and down 8,000, Air Canada 832. Sure. Tango Mike, Zulu, for further vectors, contact terminal on uh, 1189. Perform when you're ready, flight plan, weight, plot fuel, FCU. FMA, PFD, and D. Lights on, seatbelts on, landing data set. Review the set. Auto brake is low, nav accuracy is checked, in range checklist complete. Thank you. Montreal arrival, Air Canada 832 Heavy, level 6000. Air Canada 832 Heavy terminal, descent to 3000. Descent 3000, Air Canada 832 Heavy. Now, uh, Francois 48, descendez 3,000 pieds, vous êtes autorisé pour approcher de l'aide 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 de Air Canada 832, reduce speed 190 knots, you're following the uh, 747 there. Back to 190 knots, Air Canada 832. Uh, 732, I'll bring you uh, back very soon. Flaps 1, please. 4,000, Jazz 732. Oh, to leave 4,000 for 3,000. Air Canada 832, turn right, heading 210, intercept, third out, let's go far right. Right, 210 to intercept, third out, let's go far right, Air Canada 832. Cat 3 dual autopilot 1 and 2. Cat 832 reduce and maintain speed 170 knots to Jerry. Okay, reduce to and maintain 170 knots to Jerry, Air Canada 832. Oak Star. 723, clear to ILS 248. Clear to ILS 248, Jazz 723. Three two calls are now one one nine nine. Four ninety nine. Air Canada three two. Good day. Flaps two, please. Cover good day. Air Canada eight three two heavy. ILS two four right. Flap one one zero one. Contact the the department. Eight one one two. Camp this one six five. You're down. Air Canada eight three two heavy. Montreal tower. Wind two five zero at seven. Altimeter two nine or seven. Number two, clear land runway two for right. Uh, expect uh, golf taxiway, Bravo two is close. Can we check uh, golf taxiway and we're clear land uh, two for right, Air Canada 832. Thank you. Lap two, Lap three. Uh, Canada, uh, Canada, 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 Jerry was uh, 2240 okay. missing from Sherry, 1000 feet, set flat 3, V app, 135 auto thrust, speed, and landing memo, no blue, no blue, third land, 47 just rolling out ahead of us. Contactez le tablier 122 décimal 07, trafic 3000 final. 
He's getting close to the uh, turn off at the end. Yes. Auto pass off. Cat three single. Cat one. Whisky Eco Tango, Tour de Montréal, bonjour. Sortie Ville-Marie, 2000 pieds, est approuvée. Rappelez qu'il est en l'autre sortie. Merci. Montreal Tower, bonjour, Jazz. 723, it is Victor, where the ILS approaches 248. Jazz, 723, Montreal Tower, good day. Wind 26, 0 at the 9, altimeter 29 or 77, number 2. Land green, roger. Right. If not all the way to golf, the Bravo 2 is closed. 100 above. Very good. 297. Roger. We have set. Uh, clear to land. 24 right. We're going to fly an echo. Just 723. Minimum. Runway in sight. Landing. Screen. Auto brakes are off. Manual braking. And tower, you see 5168, uh, holding short 241. 70. Air Canada 832, all the way to Golf on Golf, contact April 122, this small 07. On Golf 12207, Air Canada 832. How was that? How did the landing feel back there? <laughs> Perfect. Good. <laughs> yeah, we're happy to be here. Now I suppose uh, some of our passengers get off. They treat us to rapid air as well, don't they? Yeah, some will get off, some will get off. Now, uh, do the uh, the Brussels bound ones stay on? Actually, yeah. everybody gets off. They're oh, they do? Completely uh, service the cabin again. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, then, Emer lights are off. That's good. They prepare the thing for the uh, crossing. And we will go to the uh, satellite station to get our flight plan for the overseas portion. 